to, I think, being involved in technology so much that even, and it'll probably come up in a minute, so, but I mean, like in Australia Post, for example, so we've just introduced, we're using machine learning um, AI yeah. to detect safety behaviours. Now, that project's actually from me. Now, it's actually safety, but we've been talking to Google for um, quite a long time because we're very interested in their AI product because of the way it works and stuff. And yeah. So, We've been talking for a year or so, year and a half maybe about sort of possible opportunities to use that product and then um, one of the, uh, I think he's a director or something at Post, I can't remember what his type, actual title is, like Chris Senior, he spoke to my boss who's the GM and he said, oh, that stuff that Martin talks about from, from Google, he said, can we use it for safety? He's like, yeah, do you want to have a chat to him? Anyway, so, so I wrote a, you know, I wrote a proof of concept, I wrote a scope, a proof of concept, trialed it on one side, um, they gave me 60 grand for it, you know, Showed that it worked. I went, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, do four. Oh, sorry, sorry, they went, do one. And then let's have it, let's check it. We hadn't finished the first. They went, do four. We hadn't finished the fourth. They went, do ten. So <laughs> the project's gone. It's gone berserk. And yeah. so, um, sort of like the reason I sort of told that story is that because I've got such a broad experience, yeah. I think it allows you to drift. You become, like, because you're in security, and you understand technology, you become this really trusted advice. Yep. And then they go, oh, ask those guys. And it used to happen in, even in Qantas, I became on the group, the working group, that was talking about implementing the smart chip in the frequent fire card at the okay. time. Now, you know, so again, just like, oh, you know, go and ask that guy. And sometimes I'll ask, people, why did you, re- out of interest, why did you actually ring me? And I went, oh, someone said just to ring you guys because you sort of, un- you know, you understand. Yeah, yeah. So I think that security, if you can, Pitch yourself right. You can yeah. become quite trusted and also independent as well. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go on to that a little bit um, a little bit later on uh, organisational structure and culture, which oh, is massive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's a massive part. You know, you see, you've got you've hit the nail on the head basically. You, you know, with um, the, with the skills that you've got on the services that you can provide, you know, become yeah. the trusted advisor, which unfortunately is um, is not really the norm, um, which is a shame because a lot of good operators out there. It's about the personality as yeah. well, unfortunately. You can have all the skills in the world, but if you can't sell security and be and come across as the you know, the guy without necessarily vested interest, that's where actually that's where that's where we let ourselves down as an industry. We do, we do, massively. What's your what's your thoughts and I know I really know the answer to this, you know, being a technical guy minded guy, you know, your for, your feelings and thoughts on um on continued professional development. Oh for sure, hundred percent. Like even um, just because I've moved off to other things, you know, like my boss, I got, I got selected for a leadership program in the straight post, so I only taught people a year get to go on it. So yeah. it's huge, you know, look, it's, and there's 35,000 staff, so it's like, it's pretty important. Yeah. You know? And the people who, the name, it's like a, it's like a blackballing pro- pro- process, the senior managers all come up with names and then they all start knocking them out, and they go, no, no, not, not this, and then, so if you survive, the, if you survive the selection process, yeah. it's pretty incredible, and so, and that was only, um, not last year, the year before. Yeah. Uh, so, even do we not uh, end up on that, you know? And so there's always bits and pieces that you're always off doing something else. Um, I have to admit, uh, Steve, I'm at the point now, like my boss goes, what do you want to do? Like, nothing. Yeah, yeah. It gets, really? You know, no, I don't really want to do anything. So, I'm a profuse consumer of, you know, news and... Yeah. Not, necess- not necessarily, uh, you know, not reading security electronics every day. I read things like CNET because it's a bit more broad. Um, um, so I think, you know, you, you, you also get to a point in the profession. So, and I was also, um, what was I? I was number two in ACES New South Wales, whatever, I'll pick, what is it, the deputy chairman or whatever it is. I was treasurer for a while. Um, I think I'm only, I can't remember, I'm only secretary for ACES New South Wales too. So, and that's a great organisation. Even just for the single day type things where you go and learn stuff, and it doesn't have to necessarily be a university course, yeah, yeah. but forever. You know, if it's dabbling in, oh, that's a good thing, I might go and have a look at that course, or I might go, I might go to that day, you know, for, I don't know, to, I don't know, the public spaces conference yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Even those sorts of things, I think they're critical when you watch them go by and go, oh, that's a good one, I want to know about that. And there's tangibility with, you know, and there's crossover with a lot of things that you didn't need, you know, you could walk away, and I've done it, you know, several times, go, wow, I didn't know that. I really should have known that, and I didn't. Um, <laughs> Which yeah, well, you, 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 know, you, you make notes and you go, oh, I'm going to do that. Or you might come out of it to that conference and go, I'm going to do two things at work because that, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Again, well, it's professional development, so, yeah. It is, I it agree. is. 
100 percent um you just mentioned one there uh, are you a member of any security or risk related forums and associations and how Not anymore. Ah, I'm gonna say, and oh. uh, how useful do you find or did you find the resources uh, yeah the resources yeah the, uh, what I tended to find for a lot of them um, I, to be honest with you, I found ASIO a bit low end. Um, as you start to move up in senior management in organisations, ASIS doesn't, suit, doesn't cut it for you. But it's actually it's very good for guarding. It's good for the technical people. It's very good for installers. But that was not much good. I found so I found sorry, so I found ASIO a bit low end. Yeah. I found ASIS the next step above. Um, even as much as I dislike it, because we know all the courses and stuff are American based. And yeah. Stuff, but, which, but it was still. There's a really good forum and there's a wonderful contact network. Um, so that was really good. I'm, in terms of industry associations or anything like that, no, I'm not on those, but I'm on working groups now for air cargo yep. um, and various things like that, you know, just because of, like, Australia Post has got a massive air cargo screening program, for example. Yeah, but, yeah. So industry, industry well, yes, it's still in forums, but not, not necessarily, um, not, associate, not industry associations as much. You don't, because of? Just don't want to do it anymore. Oh, it's, it's interesting. I have thought about actually heading back to ASUS again because this is what some of the things go by. Um, mm. One of the things that also shits me about it is not a female representation in there, and that representative the industry as well. And I get a bit bored of sitting around talking to blokes. Yeah, yeah. And, about, you know, um, and I did see some stuff in ASUS New South Wales, some of the things about bring, trying to bring up, uh, promote female participation. And I thought, ah, oh, that's good. Maybe I might go back there again. But then you. Oh, I think it's just become time, time poor too. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was a, yeah, there was a really good um, women in security they did in, um, in like, wow, it might be January, February now. And yeah, that was a strong, yeah, I, I sat with, um, with, with, with one of my former team who's now the head of security for um, university, Sydney University, and just a table full yeah. of women, and I just got my ear bent all all through the presentations. Like, yeah, thank, I'm glad I really chose sat here, thank you. Um, but that that was really that was really good. That was really good. Yeah. I kept asking them. Says why? Are, I can't understand why none of you still in the kitchen. Why are you out the kitchen, girls? You should be in the kitchen. So, yeah, no. so no, for, no, no, yeah fortunately, fortunately, the, the girl that um, Sarah, who's uh, who went to Sydney, she knows me or just ignored me as usual. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, it's good to have a laugh in there. But that that was really good. It seems to um, yeah, some stuff going on just being cancelled. Um, they're trying, they're trying. Yeah. yeah, of course, exactly right, exactly. What do you believe the public perception, I'll say that again, what do you believe the public perception of a security professional is at this present time? Oh, I still think it's always a bit, it's, it's a bit low, I think, generally. I think it's, you know, if you talk industry just generally, I think it's, I still think we're judged, judged as, you know, guns, guards and gates. Yeah. I don't think it's, um, I think it's quite often it can be quite hard well, not hard, but I just think there's this general perception about, you know, like if you see some security person, oh, like, oh, the 730 report, they're like, oh, okay, well, there's, there's someone. But then if you ask about, oh, what's the security industry, people just think about guards, you know. It's the, the, the low, unfortunately, it's the thing about the low end man power thing as opposed to the more strategic sort of, you know, approach to security and, you know, much more structured and, um, you know, much more sensible and stuff, I think. Do you think that creeps into organisational culture the, of our senior leadership? Yes, it, yes, most certainly. Um, so when we do, when I joined Qantas, so I was at Qantas for nine and a half years, and when we joined Qantas, it was like we had, like the streets in there was very respected, very, it was very big at the time. Yeah. Too, but we still had this terrible. You always come up against this battle against property, where property hates security. Yeah. Um, and we wore that down, and I reckon within about a couple of years, they just thought we were fantastic. Then and it, and it was more like jokes about oh bloody security going to cost me a bloody fortune. But it'd be like how much is this bevo? And I'll be like, oh, no, yeah. Oh, okay, cool, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's, um, you know, you, you, I, I, I do think one of the number one battles in business is up against the property team in large corporations. And, oh, and of course, IT, because IT hates that security often knows just as much as what about what they do, but they don't really know anything about what we do. That's it, yeah. It's, um, so we're, going, we're just about to lead into that, uh, organisational structure, <laughs> culture and development. Perfect. Perfect. I've, actually got my, I've actually got the right order. It's good. <laughs> How good's that? How good's that? It's just taken me a few years to get there, like, but it's, um, <laughs> so in your current role now, where, where, where does your, the security function sit within your organisation? 